if you may notice that my voice is not as virilic or you know as uh, manly as previous episodes of the Intrepid Podcast, it's because I am recording uh, under the weather. I'm I'm currently under the weather while recording this, and that's why I have to, you know, I have to uh, uh, conserve my voice at this point. But you know what? I'll just make this short and sweet and all that shit. Uh, the reason why is that I somehow uh, I somehow got sick after I went home from I went home to my to my mother's uh, hometown in the province of Batangas and uh, yeah that's that so pardon me if uh, my voice is not as good as it is at this point. Uh, yeah, please bear with me about that. Anyway, on this episode of the Intrepid Podcast, we are going to talk about why Mr. Beast is ushering the adpocalypse and why is he more of a nice guy than a good man. So with that said, the Intrepid Podcast starts now. I'm Ian Rignon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to another episode of the Intrepid Podcast. Now, over the past month or two, many revelations came out regarding the video-based social media platform YouTube and how it has monopolized the market at the expense of alternatives like Rumble, Kick, and Twitch. But such a monopoly is but one part of a wider scheme formulated by its parent company Alphabet, more known for its flagship firm Google, which American antitrust regulators like the Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, found as a violation to its commercial policies. And yet, every rot begins at the roots, particularly in individual and even corporate YouTube channels. While the Google monopoly case is being heard, and honestly at this point being sidelined because of Mr. Beast, it was also during this time when allegations against James Jimmy Donaldson and his media firm, Mr. Beast, began to surface from the underground. Now, if you haven't uh, been caught up to speed with the whole damn thing, I have a playlist regarding the whole Mr. Beast uh, drama saga on YouTube. I will link it in the description below and in the Spotify show notes. There are also countless YouTubers uh, in the commentary community, uh, in the com- the comment commentary creators on YouTube, uh, who are ta- who are tackling this uh, uh, thing for um, weeks now, if not uh, if not for months, or even years for one certain uh, for one certain uh, creator, and you know. You have to watch them as well. So uh, this is my own perspective, and I highly recommend that you watch the other stuff, okay, so that you have the whole picture. But in a nutshell, the allegations against Mr. Beast could be summarized into three issues, perhaps four, for those who believe in Christianity. One, the allegations against Ava Chris Tyson and the person's sexual abuse allegations prior to and during the transition from male to trans woman all of which stemmed from prophetic predictions by Lachlan Windross, a.k.a. Sonny V2, and Matt Walsh uh, from the Daily Wire. Two, the allegations against Donaldson himself about his allegedly capitalist exploitation and poverty porn, which was possi- possibly exclusively covered by British bread tuber The Cavernacle. He has a playlist about it. I'll also link it in the description below if you're interested in watching that. Although... Since he's a bread tuber, I I highly recommend that you watch all of his content of his um, animosity towards uh, Donaldson with a grain of salt because of his ideology. Three, the allegations that Donaldson was a fraud, a sociopath, a manipulator, and a neighbor of all things disgusting 
thanks to the massive bombshells shared by people such as Dawson, aka Dogpack404, Jake Weddle, Rosanna Pansino, and of late, although technically this all started in 2019, by Matt Turner, one of uh, Donaldson's first editors on Mr. Beast, just to name a very few. And four, for Christians, correlating Donaldson's and perhaps Tyson's personal falling out of Christianity, which is a ubiquitous characteristic that can be found in the southern United States, which the state of North Carolina is part of, that the area was colloquially known as the Bible Belt. You have to remember that. We have to remember that Greenville, North Carolina is the headquarters of the Mr. Beast firm. With all the, of the reprehensible actions the company made in the past decade or more, and perhaps the speculation that Donaldson is the Antichrist that believers and non-believers can mutually agree on in a secular sense. However, there are also bad takes regarding this conundrum from people in the platform, including bread tubers like Ethan is online and Hassan Piker, as well as people such as Ludwig, Philip DeFranco, Moist Critical, Nico, and Jake the Viking Franklin. Yes, Jake the Viking, who is the brother-in-law of Charles Jefferson, a.k.a. Delaware, who was mentioned by Jake Weddle as an RSO, a registered three-letter S-word offender. Others are also not really that invested in the drama, just like Chandler Hallow, a Mr. Beast staple who has since been practicing his Christianity by reading the Bible on TikTok. Although Hallow's silence regarding this is deafening, which is why it is understandable people are talk- t- taking rather this silence of his with a grain of salt. In short, when everyone, from conservatives to centrists to liberals, from far-right extremists to far-left bread tubers, is having a field day against you for some dumb decisions and some dumb shit you made that you have resorted on sending cease and desist orders on dissenters, you know you're screwed. You know you're fucked. And now what does it mean for YouTube and the creators in it? Honestly, I don't know. But while Felix PewDiePie Kjellberg is now at peace with himself, learned from his lesson on what he said on a bridge a few years back, which triggered, I guess, triggered the second adpocalypse, and now refocused on being a good husband to Marcia and a good father to Björn, and I would like to, you know, congratulate the Kjellberg family for their wedding anniversary. Everyone else is feeling the pressure that advertisers would be pulling the plug on YouTube yet again, causing creators to resort to promoting themselves via alternative means like Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, Ko-Fi, PayPal, Locals, or Kickstarter, as well as make contingencies and also upload or migrate to YouTube competitors like Rumble, Twitch, and Kick, and in in the case of podcasts, perhaps on SoundCloud, Podbean, Google Podcasts, or maybe uh, Apple Podcast, and maybe even Spotify, but I digress. This just goes to show that YouTube is on the cusp of another adpocalypse, adpocalypse 3.0 if I'm not mistaken. Perhaps it has already begun, thanks to Donaldson and his company. And you know what? I really think Donaldson is not just uh, a fraud, a sociopath, and all that shit, but he's also a nice guy gone wrong, or a nice guy gone evil. And here's why. Perhaps everyone who are who is still listening at this point is aware of the quote about heroes and villains. Perhaps... You, you know this from the DC uh, universe. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself a villain. Now, there is a similar analogy about how people see themselves. A nice guy either dies to himself a good man or lives long enough to see himself an evil one. And what you're about to hear is merely one explanation on how it works. So please, if you can, take this with a grain of salt. 
nice guys tend to have very good intentions on how they live their lives, but through no fault of their own, some of them have no means to do so or have been hyperfixated on being able to attain it by any means necessary. Some of these people may also have external factors that motivate or discourage them from achieving whatever their goals are, such as living in a fatherless home or in one that their mother married, dropping out of school for any reason, or difficulty in finding friends or a limited circle if there is any. Now, as a result, nice guys compensate for what they lack by trying as many interests as possible and see which would sick. Once they identify it, they try their best on being good at it and show off their discoveries to as many people as possible to prove themselves that they are not just some random kid at school or that humdrum guy in the office. But here is the twist. Everyone was born a nice guy or a nice girl, and as they age, they stumble a fork on the road. One leading to apparently a smooth and alluring path but has a dark and uncertain destination. The other leading to a rough and bumpy road, but a light can be seen far off. At this point, the nice guy chooses either to become a good man by constantly being self-conscious about his character or to continue becoming a nice guy and be aloof by focusing on his intentions and not on his personality. As I said, everyone was born a nice guy or a nice girl. So, he has which way uh, he would he would choose is up to him. Now, this also applies to women, as I said, because there are also nice girls, or actually there are good girls. But since I am a man, I would rather explain this in a male perspective and let a female writer explain how it works for her because, as I said, there's uh, the counterpart of the nice guy is the good girl. And there is also a mental health a uh, tendency which is which is called the good girl syndrome where uh you know it's really hard to explain this because uh I'm a man and I would let a female content creator or podcaster talk about this uh talk about the good girl syndrome and I I know there are I know there are a lot of stuff out there for the good girl syndrome so do check it out but since i am a man as i said i would explain this in uh from a male perspective so hear me out a nice guy simply wants to do the things other people do and eventually do whatever it takes to have a leg up against all of his competition since he thinks the winner takes it all now the fate of the nice guy is uncertain but if he follows through and not thinks not think uh, for himself, for just a second, he would not only lose his sense of direction and his soul, but also perhaps become monstrous without knowing he already became a beast of a person. Perhaps he might also disregard the benefit of others because he might have been hurt in the past and the evil that he is doing is his defense mechanism to not suffer a similar primal wound but you know it is the nice guy uh, the path of the nice guy and the evil man is characterized by one word pride it all boils down to pride and with that said is it possible for a nice guy to become a good man the answer to that is yes and if i dare add it is never too late to become one Now, a good man is not only aware of his faults and his wounds, but also the realization that he can still appreciate what other people do without being bitter by it, or in the case of competition, does his best, humbly accepts his victories, and admits defeat and congratulates his competitors if he does lose. He knows that not everything is dog-eat-dog or by hook hook or by crook, and continues to do the good that he does without having to be known for it. He also keeps on working on how to improve himself and more importantly, knows how and where to stop, or at least struggles to know, 
in the extreme case where every effort, attempt, or workaround has been exhausted. Ultimately, he dies to oneself in the hopes that the world that he would live again a changed man. It sounds familiar to me because that's the path St. Ignatius of Loyola uh, and other similar stories from the lives of Catholic saints lived through. So that's just my take on it. And all of these guys, all of the good men, can be characterized or what they do in order to become a good man is characterized by one word. And that is humility. Now, the fate of the good man is also uncertain as he may turn into a nice guy and thus an evil man at the last moment. But if he plays his cards very well, he would not only be endowed with wisdom in this life, but perhaps with a legacy to be positively remembered, a benevolent reputation in history, or if he is a believer, even a greater reward afterwards. You know, for those who believe that there is an afterlife, there would be a greater reward if that's that's what I that's what I'm trying to say. Now, living to become a good man will never be easy, and it could even reduce you to tears, especially if you relapse into your previous life or let go of your pride if that is the only thing that you have. However, it will leave you leaning more ab- learning more about yourself and in turn gain much fruit of such contemplation philosophical or otherwise. And for those of you who chose to become good men, let me tell you something. You are not alone. For I myself am taking part on that journey. It's never going to be easy. But I chose this nevertheless. And I would like to give a huge shout out to Anthony James Pettis, the author of the book, The Man You're Meant to Be, and one half of the Facebook uh, podcast or show called The Sentinel. Uh, I guess uh, he's partnered with Jay Aruga. So uh, yeah. And you know what? I just finished reading his book earlier this year, and it was absolutely uh you know it it was absolutely something that i am definitely looking forward to become and i highly recommend this to guys who really wanted to ha- to become a good man without being a soy boy or uh a red a red pill guy because there is a third option and that is spiritual masculinity i i'm not sure how will this be republished by uh by Perez but i do hope that he would um he would have uh the uh the capacity to have this uh republished by maybe St. Paul's because J. Aroga is also launching um his own book about conservatism uh next month in September but you know what uh I would like to congratulate them for for all of that. So, yeah. Again, uh I hope uh Perez's book is still out there. There are still copies for you to buy and I I promise you if you're a man, it will change your perspective. It will change your life even if it you would need to suffer some kind of relapse because it will never be easy. He even admits that it is not easy. So, that's that. And on that note, I end today's podcast. I would like to thank you all for listening at this point. Even though I am a bit sick uh, by this recording. Now, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. And there as well as on Substack, because I also have a Substack. That's intrepidianrenion.substack.com. The name of it is The Intrepid Files. So uh, do check it out. Uh, And uh, if you think that there are things that I might not have included in this recording, or if you want to have your say about the matter, 
please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. Also, before you go, I would like to... Uh, please make sure to like this uh, video if you're on YouTube and share this around. Subscribe as well to my channel, Intrepidian Reunion, and ring the notification bell by selecting all. I'm also on my social media accounts. I have a Facebook page, uh, Twitter slash X, X account, uh, an Instagram account. I'm also on Strava because I also ride a bike. So uh, you do please do check out my bike rides if you're uh, if you're on Strava. And uh, yeah, so again, as I said, I'm also on Substack. So, uh, the name is uh, the name of the Substack page I have that I have is the Intrepid Files, at and that is intrepidian.substack.com without the n. Anyway, uh, I also have a Spotify version of the Intrepid podcast. So please follow me all along as well there, so that you would have. So, you, so that you have another option to listen to this uh, podcast. And with all that said, this is Intrepid and Reunion reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other. And as always, thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, see you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. Ian out.